Did you know you could get Steelix and Caesar before beating the fourth gym in Gen 2 Pokemon? Today we'll be looking at 23 early Pokemon you didn't know you could get in Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Now Steelix and Caesar are often thought to be locked away and inaccessible until after the game's Elite Four. This is because the player is first handed one on the SS Aqua for bringing the little girl back to her grandpa. Upon completing this quest, the player is able to get off the boat and revisit Kanto, but not before they're given a metal coat. Now even before we get to that badge three, Steelix, I always believed this was the only metal coat you could get in the entire game. It turns out, however, that this is not the case, as in the Kanto Power Plant, there is an NPC looking to trade his Magneton for a Doug Trio. If you agree to the trade, not only will you have a Magneton, but in your party, you'll notice that it comes with a metal coat, bringing the total number of in-game metal coats up to two. But as promised, it gets even crazier than that. Not only does this Magneton carry a metal coat, but it turns out that all Magnemites have a 2% chance to be holding one. The first and only instances of Magnemite in Johto are on the farm routes of 38 and 39 between Ecrotique and Olivine City, and an extremely diligent player can farm catching Magnemites until they come across one holding the elusive metal coat. It's a 1-2 to two hour long grind, but does technically make both Caesar and Steelix available before the player has even beat Morty. Fortunately, there is a much quicker method that is accessible only right after Morty. Once the player has the fourth badge in Surf, they're able to head east to the Lake of Rage. From here, they can trigger the Lance cutscene to open up the rocket hideout and start battling their way through. Towards the last section of the hideout, just before the first executive fight, there's a ladder to a small room which contains the TM Thief. And Thief is a TM which permanently steals the held item of the opponent. So rather than spending hours no life in catching Magnemites, a player simply has to get Thief, head back to those roots, and hit every Magnemite that pops up with the move. With a 20% spawn rate, it should only take the player about 20 minutes before they pop off a Magnemite's metal coat. And then boom, there you have it. Super easy Steelix or Caesar. But that's not the only trade Pokemon you can do this with. There is a single King's Rock located at the bottom of Slowpoke Well, but Gen 2 obviously has two King's Rock evolutions. If you're looking to complete the decks or get both Politoed and Slowking, you can follow the similar method to Thief a second King's Rock off of Wild Slowpoke. But what I find interesting is that you can push this a little further. The Slowpoke Well Ground Cave encounters have a 15% chance to spawn Slowpoke. So theoretically, a very lucky trainer could come across a King's Rock holding a Slowpoke before the second gym. Now, one Pokemon I didn't know was truly available in the game at all was Pupitar. We all know that Larvitar isn't available until Mount Silver itself, but as it turns out, Pupitar can be found here too. At the top peak of Mount Silver, where Red stands, there is a 1% chance to find a level 20 Pupitar in both the morning and the day. Another Pokemon that 99% of you know about, but I still need to mention for the 1% is Lapras. Lapras can be found surfing at the bottom of Union Cave on Fridays, and if you didn't know, now you know. But there is another group of Pokemon, however, who, while you may have never questioned their accessibility, are actually a lot easier to get than you may have thought. In Gold and Silver, players were unable to access Ninetales, Arcanine, Flareon, Poliwrath, Cloyster, Starmie, Vaporeon, Raichu, Jolteon, Vileplume, Victory Bell, or Exeggutor until Kanto. These are the elemental stone evolution Pokemon, and you could only get one of each stone from Bill's grandfather north of Cerulean City. Crystal fixed this, however, by adding four trainers who came with a rematch option. These players would call with a small chance to have news that they found a stone and were willing to give it to you. And while this did technically open up the game a little bit, it was still extremely inconsistent, with some playthroughs not seeing a single stone from any of them. Fortunately, however, there is a way to use the time mechanic of Gen 2 to drastically increase the frequency of calls. To do this, you first make sure you only have the phone number of the person whose specific stone you want. Next, you head back to New Barktown and save before talking to your mom. Next, you have her repeatedly turn daylight savings time on and off until you get a call. They'll either challenge you to a rematch, tell you a simple story, or say they're waiting on their route with your stone. If you don't get the right dialogue, simply reset your game until the call is for the stone. From here, you could pick it up and evolve one of the many great stone evolution Pokemon. And not only does this take less than 20 minutes, it's infinitely repeatable for all four elemental stones. Another group of Pokemon that are more accessible than you may have thought are the Friendship Evolutions. While there are many Friendship Evolutions in Gen 2, the most common ones you'd be going for are Crobat, Umbreon, and Espeon. Gen 2 happiness is something that is extremely slow to build passively, but players who are willing to put in a bit of active effort can get this very quickly. The first way to abuse happiness is really only available for getting Crobat, but it's super interesting. After the player gets Surf and Cut, they can access the green Apricot 
caught on Route 42. Taking it to Kurt and waiting a day yields one Friend Ball. Now, most Pokemon have very low catch odds with the Friend Ball, and because of this, it's just not really worth your time to grind for multiple of them. Golbat's highest success rate is 38, while something like Chansey is only going to see at best a 16% catch rate. A sleeping red HP Zubat, however, will have a near, if not 100% catch rate, and the Friend Ball instantly puts the friendship to 200 out of 220 needed. And if you catch Zubat at level 12 or lower, its 10 levels up to Golbat at 22 will be enough to put it at a spot where it will instantly evolve into Crobat at 23. Now, another interesting way to grind friendship in Gen 2 is through X items. In this case, you'll need 45,000 cash to purchase 130 X speed from the Goldenrod department store. From here, get into a battle with a low level Magikarp or Hoppet that only knows Splash so it can't hurt you. Now, every time you use an X speed, it raises friendship once. And even after your speed is stage 6, they will still apply and consequently continue to raise friendship. Now this will take 15 to 20 minutes until you reach the cap of 200 friendship. From here, you can then again choose to follow the previous level up method. Crystal players specifically, however, can opt to level the Pokemon on the route they caught it for a double friendship yield. In this case, each level up would give 4 rather than 2, taking only 5 more levels to hit the max 220 friendship. And for those who are even lazier, I have one more friendship method for you. In Gen 2 Crystal, every 512 steps raises friendship of the lead Pokemon by one. Some players will get a bike and travel up and down the length of Goldenrod City, but this is a process that takes hours of active focus. There is, however, an easier way. You know how the puzzle in Morty's Gym will send you back to the start if you take an incorrect path? Well, this mechanic actually sets up the perfect AFK happiness farmer. Simply stand in the correct position, tape your D-pad to the upward position, and leave the game overnight. You will constantly walk up, fall in, over and over and over. And upon returning, you should hit the allotted number of steps and you'll be free to evolve your Pokemon on its next level up. Now yet another group of Pokemon that are much easier to get than you might think are the legendary beasts. For a typical playthrough, these Pokemon can be very hard to come across for the first time as they won't appear on your decks until you've encountered one. As a kid, I would often be running around just randomly hoping to get into an encounter with one. But fortunately, there is a really easy way to find them blind. First, get 20 super repels, and then fly to Ecruteak City with a leading Pokemon that is at least level 17. You're going to head south to Route 37 with a repel active and walk through the grass for 20 to 30 steps. Since the highest level Pokemon is 16 here, the only thing you can encounter is a beast, so if you don't get it shortly, you know it's not there. From here, continue down to Route 36 and repeat the process. If this doesn't work, head to Route 35, repeat again, and if there is no appearance in this last time, it is very crucial to do this, but fly back to Ecutic City. Flying scrambles the locations of the dog, essentially resetting their location. Outside of flying, every time the trainer moves between routes, the dogs will move one location. And the way that Jota was laid out makes Ecrutique a bit of a central hub. The routes you'll be walking through act as a bit of a funnel, giving you extremely high odds of running into the dogs. I've tried this method myself, and I encountered Raikou in less than five minutes. If you found anything interesting in this video, please subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.